talk about a crusher. Yes! Oh! Are you kidding me? And gone! Oh! Welcome back to the Squared Sports Land Frank Podcast. Almost this podcast, Land Frank. We are now in episode number 42. It's been 42 episodes through, and there is so much to discuss in this action packed episode. We we're talking about the MOB trade deadline just wrapped up, NBA draft, NBA free agency, and so much more. So stay tuned for Squared Sports Land Frank, episode number 42. Let's jump into it. Let's start with episode number 42, how you always do with our headlines in the NBA. There's so much news, okay? The NBA draft got wrapped up. I grade all the 10 picks in the Squared Sports Instagram. I grade top 10 picks in the NBA draft, Squared Sports Instagram. I'll say my least favorite pick of the draft was the Scotty Barnes pick at number four. And there were so many good picks in this draft, okay? I love the Zaire Williams number 10 pick going to the Grizzlies. I obviously love Cade Cunningham going number one to the Pistons. You know... Evan Mobley, who went number three to the Cavs, he's not getting the respect he deserves, okay? Evan Mobley might come out when it's all said and done as the best player in this draft. He might, okay? He's a seven-foot freak. He might be better than Anthony Davis in his career. You can quote me on that. He might be better than Anthony Davis, okay? Evan Mobley might be. He's going to be such a good player in his NBA career. He's going to pair up against Jared Allen, okay? That Cleveland lineup next year, it's young, but it could be good. If they keep Colin Sexton, you can have a lineup of Darius Garland, Colin Sexton, Jared Allen, Evan Mobley, and then whoever at small forward, okay? That is a dangerous lineup, okay? A dangerous lineup in the East. They can be the number seven seed. They can be the number six seed in the East. They can, okay? This team is going to be good this year. They are. Cleveland Cavaliers, going to be a good team this year. Love that pick to Gavin Mobley. But there's also so much more news in the NBA free agency as already on the go. And there's so much news to talk about. But I'll save it for later on in the episode. I don't want to get too in-depth in the headlines. But there's so much news about NBA free agency. The Lakers looking like the clear winners of free agency right now. That's what we all felt last year. Yet the Lakers didn't even make the, to the second round this year. Okay, the Lakers had an amazing free agency last year. Didn't even make the second round. Okay, Montres Harrell already gone after one year. Marcus Gasol looks like he might be on his way out. Okay, those are pretty much the top two signings they got in free agency last year. But they got Carmelo Anthony. They got Russell Westbrook the night of the draft. And they got a lot more pieces. This Lakers team, a lot of people are saying it's old. It's like an antique store. You know, the Lakers aren't old. They're experienced. It's not an old team. It's an experienced team. That's what I'm going to say. They got a little bit of a young core. You know, you got Anthony Davis and Taylor Horton Tucker in there. But then you also got your really old guys. You got Trevor Ariza. You got LeBron James, Marcus Gasol, Carmelo Anthony. You got your you Russell Westbrook. You got your experienced core in there. That's why this team's dangerous. That's why I think this team can make a run at the finals this year. A lot of people, this is why the Lakers are a top four team in the NBA right now. Yes, they are. But us move to the MOB. There is also so much news. All right, the MOB trade deadline wrapped up, and so many big trades have happened, leading off with the Joey Gallo trade, going over to the Yankees. All right, that was a big deal. They gave up, they didn't give up their top prospects. They didn't give up Luis Gill, but they did give up Alexander Vizcaino for Anthony Rizzo. But Anthony Rizzo has been playing great so far for the Yankees. Two home runs in his first two games. That's what he had. Andy Rizzo was a great pickup for the Yankees. So was Joey Gallo, a great pickup for the Yankees. But that wasn't the only big deal of the trade deadline. Max Scherzer and Trey Turner both going to L.A., going to the Dodgers. It looked like Padres, Scherzer was a done deal. The Dodgers slept in. They gave up Kyber Ruiz, Josiah Gray, a few other prospects for Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. Two of the Nationals' three best players, okay? Their three best players going into the trade deadline day. We're probably Juan Soto, Max Scherzer, and Trey Turner. Juan Soto's the only one left, okay? They trade Scher- they trade Kyle Schwarber. They got rid of almost everybody but Juan Soto, the Nationals did, okay? They gave up Jan Gomes. They gave up a lot of pieces. They gave up Daniel Hudson. They gave up Brad Hand. They gave up pretty much their whole team besides Juan Soto. But people forget, this team won the World Series two years ago, okay? And they just pretty much blew up their whole entire team except for Juan Soto. But that wasn't the only trade in the MLB, okay? My favorite team. Their division rivals, the New York Mets, my favorite team, the New York Mets. They got a big deal. They got Javier Baez, and they only gave up Pete Crow Armstrong, who is hurt right now. Some say he may never play again. Not sure about that, but the Mets didn't give up much for Javier Baez. Hit a bomb in his first game. Pretty much won the Mets that first game. Okay, hit a two-run home run. That was an amazing thing to see against the Reds. Okay, so many big trades happen in the MLB. We'll get more into the MLB trade headline later. But let's move to the NFL, where there's also so much news with training camp beginning. Okay, my favorite... Team, the New York Giants are my favorite NFL team. They got in a bit of trouble the other day. All right, a huge practice fight. Joe Judge got a lot very upset, but I'll talk more about that later. But it's just interesting to see how the Giants, 
it might be a divided team this year. That might be a reason why they don't make the playoffs this year. I still hope they make the playoffs this year, and I still do think they can win that NFC East division if they focus and they're all locked in together, which I think they will be. Joe Judge is the great coach. He's going to work on all that. I think he will. He was just upset. Daniel Jones was at the bottom of that pile. And I don't blame him, okay? Giants are going to have a good season this year. They just need to figure a few things out, a big training camp fight in the first week of training camp. That's just an interesting thing to see. Okay, but... You know, how about the Colts, everybody, all right? How about the Colts? What an amazing start to training camp the Colts have had. I'm just kidding. Okay, what happened in one week of training camp for the Colts? Their head coach, Frank Reich, test positive for COVID. He's out. Okay, he's not going to be there for the first week of training camp. What happens the next day? Carson Wentz, their star quarterback who they trade for in the offseason, breaks his foot, has a foot injury. He's going to be out for pretty much half the season. Okay, now they don't have a quarterback. It's okay. It's all good. We're going to play our backup quarterback. He's got Quentin Nelson, the best offensive lineman in the game. He'll take care of him. We got the best offensive line in the NFL. Quentin Nelson, next day, breaks his foot also. Okay, he's going to be out for half the season. Just interesting to see with the Colts, okay? Colts have had a historically terrible start to training camp. They have. It's just an interesting thing to see. Colts off to a terrible start in training camp. Carson Wentz is going to be out for half the season. I'm hoping... I'm really hoping they make Jacob Beeson their starting quarterback. Jacob Beeson's never really been given a fair shake in his football career. I'll talk more about that later, but that's about it for the headlines this week. Leave your thoughts in the comments section. Now, top five. This week's top five is top five NBA teams after free agency. Here we've seen huge moves in free agency. We've seen DeMar DeRozan going to the Bulls. Are the Bulls a top five team in the NBA? Probably not yet. Are the Kia top five team in the NBA after getting Kyle Lowry and P.J. Tucker? Probably not yet, but let's hop into it. Here are my top five teams in the NBA. Number five, we've got the Philadelphia 76ers, everybody. All right, they got Andre Drummond. It's a great move for the Sixers getting Andre Drummond, but it's a really bad move, okay, for Andre Drummond. Okay, you know why? Because... The Philadelphia 76ers' best player is Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid gets hurt a lot, and whenever Joel Embiid is hurt, they don't have a good backup center. Now, when Joel Embiid gets hurt in the season, because he will get hurt, he will be out for two weeks, once at a time. I mean, maybe he'll be out for two weeks the season at a time, all right? That's just what Joel Embiid is. He's going to get hurt. But they got a great backup center for him. They got Andre Drummond, everybody. Okay, Andre Drummond's not... He had a rough season last year, but he's a rebounding machine, all right? Andrew Drummond, a great pickup for the Sixers team. A great pickup. Sixers were the number one seed in the Eastern Conference last year. People forget that. They were the best regular season team in the Eastern Conference last year. They made the second round. They almost beat the Atlanta Hawks. Almost. Number five team after free agency heading into this new NBA season, the Philadelphia 76ers. Number four, the Phoenix Suns, the runner-up of this year. I'm not going to put them top two because... If everyone was healthy last year, every team was healthy last year, the Phoenix Suns wouldn't have made the NBA Finals, okay? Can we all agree on that? They wouldn't have made the NBA Finals last year if everyone was healthy. If LeBron and Anthony Davis were fully healthy last year, the Suns wouldn't have made the playoffs. They just wouldn't have. So many other teams were probably better than the, the, even the Nuggets, okay? If Jamal Murray was fully healthy last year, if the Nuggets were fully healthy last year, the Nuggets might have beat the Suns in that second round series, and the Nuggets might have been in the Finals this year, okay? That's what it would have been. Phoenix Suns, number four team after free agency. Number three, the Los Angeles Lakers, everybody. All right? I said they were a top four team in the NBA, and I didn't put them at four. I put them at number three. All right, The trades they've made this offseason to get Russell Westbrook, they lost Alex Caruso. Big deal. Big wolf. Alex Caruso, they're probably going to lose Dennis Schroeder, who had a terrible attitude this year. Okay, I don't like Dennis Schroeder this year at all. Lakers, third best team after free agency, in my opinion. Number two, the Brooklyn Nets. All right, KD, Kyrie, James Harden. Is there any more to be said? There isn't. Number two team after free agency, the Brooklyn Nets. And they got Patty Mills. That's all I got to say. Number two, Brooklyn Nets. Number one, the reigning champions, who I kind of doubted last year up until the finals. The reigning champions, the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis, they lost P.J. Tucker, but they kept Bobby Portis. Okay, they kept Bobby Portis and they lost P.J. Tucker. Not a big deal, in my opinion, losing P.J. Tucker. P.J. Tucker, I don't even think he scored in game six. Okay, it was just, it's interesting to see, but they left them. But Bobby Portis, sticking with them. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, they're all coming back. Number one team heading into next season, the Milwaukee Bucks. You can't put anybody above them, okay? You can say, oh, Lakers, fully healthy, fully healthy. Have we seen Carmelo and LeBron play together ever? No, we haven't. Have we seen LeBron, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook all play together? Do we know if it's going to work? No, we don't. So you can't put the Lakers at number one. You can't put the Suns at number one because they just lost to the Bucks. There's no argument for the Bucs not to be the best team heading into this NBA season. There isn't. The Bucs are the best team in the NBA right now, 
heading this NBA season. Can't debate me on. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, did you know in this video, you know, it's going. Did you know the Colorado Rockies and Miami Marlins, they've never won their divisions, and they were both brought the league in the year 1991. They've been in MLB for 30 years, yet neither of them have ever won their division. Marlins have never won the NL East. Rockies have never won the NL West. Rockies have come close, not so much with the Marlins. Doesn't look like the Marlins are going to win the NL East this year. Doesn't, definitely does not look like the Rockies are going to win the NL West. That's all I gotta say. Did you know that the Rockies and Marlins have never ever won their division? They're the only two MLB teams to never ever win their division. Did you know that? Leave that in the comment section. All right, let's introduce a new segment on Squared Sports. Let's call it Training Camp Talks. Right? From now until the start of the NFL season, we'll be doing a segment every single episode called Training Camp Talks, where we'll break down all the NFL news. Let's hop into it. First thing I want to talk about is the New Orleans Saints. Who is going to be their quarterback? Is it going to be Jameis? Is it going to be Taysom Hill? Okay, I personally think it should be Jameis Winston. But no one's Sean Payton. No one is system. It's probably going to be Taysom Hill. And even if it is Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill's going to get at least 15 plays on week one, okay? That's just what it's going to be. Leave in the comment section who you think the Saints starting quarterback should be. But in my opinion, I think it should be Jameis Winston. All right. Next thing I want to talk about, and I kind of already talked about it in the headlines, I want to talk more about the Indianapolis Colts and their quarterback situation. Okay, there have been things. Philip Rivers, he's going to come back and be the Colts quarterback. Nick Foles, he's going to come back and be the Colts quarterback. I want to give you a breakdown of every single possible situation there can be, and I want to give an argument for all of them. Okay, Philip Rivers, you know, he might come out of retirement, but he had no offseason training. No offseason training. Yeah, he knows Frank Rex's playbook, but... He's at 39 years old, I think. No offseason training, like I said. Wasn't prepared to play an NFL season this year, yet he still might. All right, that's not ideal. That is not an ideal situation, having a new offense coordinator since Hank Sirianni is going to be the Eagles head coach. Okay, you can't have one week to learn new offense coordinator's playbook, not train all season like I've already said, and then expect to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. I don't think that works for Philip Rivers. I don't think that's what the Colts should do. But will they do it? Maybe. They could. I can definitely see... Jim or say Chris Ballard, Frank Reich, give an old Philip Rivers a call and saying, hey, Philip, you want to come back? Philip Rivers would express that. He'd be okay with doing it. He'd want to be the Colts quarterback this year if he got the call. That's what I think. I don't think Philip Rivers should be the Colts starting quarterback this year. I really don't. I think Jacob Eason deserves a fair shake, okay? Jacob Eason, let me give you a little background, all right? He was a star touted high school quarterback, went to Georgia, had a good season in 2016, brought them to a good bowl game. And then the next year was expected to be starting quarterback for Georgia. It was going to be a big year for Georgia. Georgia made the national championship that year, led by Jake Fromm, because Jacob Eason tore his ACL, and I'm pretty sure the first game of the season. Then the next season, they gave Jake Fromm the starting quarterback drop over Jacob Eason. So Jacob Eason had to transfer to Washington, where at Washington they had a bit of a rough season, but Jacob Eason declared. Jacob Eason has a huge cannon of an arm. Jacob Eason's a good player. He's in the NFL now, going to the Colts, on the Colts, like I said, everybody. He's currently their backup quarterback, but he's probably going to be the starter by week one if they don't get Nick Foles or Phillip Rivers. Okay, I think they, Jacob Eason deserves to be the starting quarterback of this team. I think he does. I think for at least four or five weeks, I think he can make this team a good team. I think if he plays five weeks, I think he can get them to a 3-2 and two record, 4-1 and one record, something like that. I think Jake Beeson's a very, very good quarterback. I think he can be a starting quarterback in the NFL. I think he can, but I want to bring up one other quarterback who I think could be the Colts' starting quarterback this year, Nick Foles. All right, Nick Foles, people don't realize Frank Reich was Nick Foles' coach in Philadelphia. He was the Philadelphia Eagles' offense coordinator of the year. Nick Foles won them the Super Bowl, everybody. He can adjust his playbook to Nick Foles' style. He can. All right, Nick Foles, familiar with that system. Nick Foles, not going to be the starting quarterback, not going to be He's not going to be the backup for the Bears. He's the third-string quarterback currently for the Bears. That's not currently ideal. The Bears are going to try and move him, and I think the Colts should maybe make an offer if they don't see Jacob Beeson as a starting quarterback and if they don't give Phillip Rivers a call. Right now, I think the Colts' top three options are number one, getting Jacob Beeson the job at starting quarterback, number two, getting Nick Foles, and number three, worst-case scenario, worst-case scenario, just last-minute plan, getting Phillip Rivers back. That's what I think. That's about for training camp talks this week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. All right, around the bases, everybody. And this is a big around the bases, all right? We're going to talk about a lot in the around bases this week. All right, we're going to go through my top five MLB teams and who won all the big trades that happened at the trade deadline. Let's hop into it. First one, Jose Barrios to the Blue Jays. Who won that trade? Was it the Blue Jays 
Or was it the Twins? Who'd the Blue Jays give up for Jose Barrios? Jess Jose Barrios? They give up Simeon Woods Richardson, starting pitcher, who probably will be better than Jose Barrios in his career, and Austin Martin, who was the number five pick in the MLB draft last year. Shortstop out of Vanderbilt. Okay, I understand they got Bo Bichette, but Austin Martin could be better. All right. I absolutely hate this deal for the Blue Jays. I think it's a great deal for the Twins. Twins are not in win-now mode, okay? And they got two great prospects, great prospects. Jose Barrios, good player, not having a great season. Right? He's going to be a rental for you guys. You don't trade your two best prospects for a rental. You don't trade two potential future Hall of Famers for a rental pitcher who's having a bad season currently. Right? I get it. Blue Jays need pitching. They want to win right now. They're not really in a position to win the World Series this year. Okay, they got great hitting. Okay, but what if you don't get Jose Barrios back next year? You just lost two of your best prospects. You just lost two future amazing players in Austin Martin and Simeon Woods Richardson. I think the Blue Jays lost a trade, and the Twins won it. Let's go over to the Bay, where there was a big trade. Chris Bryant going over to the San Francisco Giants. I think no doubt about it in my mind, the San Francisco Giants won this trade. They gave up Alexander Canario and a no-name prospect, pretty much. They didn't give up their top prospects, okay? You don't see them giving up Marco Luciano. They don't see them giving up Mar- Mauricio Dubon, okay? They're not giving up Joey Bart. They're giving up Alexander Canario. He's a top 10 prospect for them, but he's not their best prospect. I don't even think he's a top three prospect for the Giants, okay? He's going over to the Cubs. I don't love this deal for the Cubs. The Cubs could have done a better job with shopping Chris Bryant. Says they did a great job with shopping Craig Kimball. Okay, they got Nick Madrigal, former number four overall pick in return. But that was the only good trade they made, okay? They didn't get much for Anthony Rizzo. They didn't get much for Javier Baez. And they didn't get much for Chris Bryant. I think the Mets won the Javier Baez trade. I think the Giants easily won the Chris Bryant trade. I think they did. Who won the Max Scherzer trade Turner trade? Okay, it's interesting. Trey Turner is a young player. Max Scherzer is a good player. If the Dodgers win, this, win the World Series this year, there is no argument for the Nationals. No argument. At all. Because Josiah Gray wouldn't have helped them win a World Series this year. Max Scherzer would. Okay. If they win the World Series this year, the Dodgers, no argument for the Nationals at all. But they got Kyber Ruiz. They got Josiah Gray. Josiah Gray, a great pitcher. Only gave up one run in his start for the Nationals he had this week. Okay. Kyber Ruiz is going to be a good player coming up from AAA. He is. But it's just an interesting thing to see. They gave up a lot of prospects at the Dodgers, but they got two star-studded, two all-stars in return. They got... Max Scherzer and Trey Turner, two great players in return. That's why I think the Dodgers won that trade. And that's why I think, you know, the teams who were selling this year didn't get the best hand, okay? The Cubs who were selling this year didn't get good deals in return, okay? Nationals were selling, didn't get great deals in return. That's my opinion on it. But let's hop into my top five MLB teams as of right now. Number five, the Chicago White Sox, everybody, are managed by Tony La Russa. They're going to progressively get better down the line, okay? Say they get Eloy Jimenez back for October. Say they get Luis Robert back for October. This team's a top three team in the MLB. But as of right now, I'm putting them at number five. Number four, the Milwaukee Brewers. Okay, I don't watch Brewers games that much, but they're having a good season, all right? Christian Yelich isn't having an MVP type season, but Brandon Woodruff is. Corbin Burns is. Okay, they got a great pit and staff this year. Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Freddie Peralta. That's about all I gotta say. Fourth best team in the MLB right now, Milwaukee Brewers. Number three, the Boston Red Sox, all right, everybody. Alex Verdugo, J.D. Martinez, Chris Sales coming back, Eduardo Rodriguez, Garrett Richards, Tanner Hoek. All right, this is a good team. Third best team in the MLB. Number two, the San Francisco Giants, everybody. All right, they were pro- a lot of people think they're the best team in the MLB. A lot of people thought they were the best MLB team before the MLB trade that line, okay? And then they got Chris Bryant, one of the best players in the MLB this year, okay? They're a top two team in the MLB, and they're number two, the San Francisco Giants. Number one. I said it earlier, the Los Angeles Dodgers, everybody. It pains me not to put my Mets in the top five. But they've been struggling as of late. They have. They have a 13-game stretch where they just play the Giants and the Dodgers. That's crazy. From August 13th to August 26th, the Mets only play the Giants and the Dodgers. That's interesting to me. Okay, the Mets get out of those series. If they win all of those series, the Mets are a top three team in the MLB. Okay, there's no debating that at all. They're probably the best National League team if they win all those games. Or if they win most of those games, in my opinion. The Mets are. But as of right now, the Los Angeles Dodgers are the best team in that movie. The best team. They got Trey Turner, Max Scherzer, Clayton Kershaw, Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger, Corey Seager. I could go on for days. I can name their whole lineup. But we don't have time for that this episode. Okay. Los Angeles Dodgers, the best team in that movie, in my opinion. They are. That's about for Around the Bases this week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. All right. I wanted to do a highlight spotlight in the Chicago Bulls. I'm not a Chicago Bulls fan. 
up until this offseason. But they're turning. The Bulls might be my second favorite NBA team right now. Okay, of course, it's always number one Knicks. But the Bulls, they're going to be such a fun and exciting team to watch this year. Let me break it down to you, all right? They got Alonzo Ball at point guard or Kobe White, who I love. I don't know what they're going to do with Kobe White, but I love Kobe White. Such a great player. You can plug in whoever at point guard, Alonzo Ball or Kobe White. Okay, you got DeMar DeRozan at shooting guard. Pairing up with Nikola Vucevic, who's going to be their center. They both played in college together, okay? They both played college ball together at UC. That's an interesting thing to think about. They got chemistry together. Okay, then you got Zach Levine at small forward. Nikola Vucevic at center. That is a great team, in my opinion. A great team. This team's going to make the playoffs this year. They could be the number four seed, in my opinion. Okay, they can be that wild card East team who could be good this year. Okay, that's why I think about the Chicago Bulls. That deal for DeMar DeRozan was the best deal the Chicago Bulls have made in years, in my opinion. They've been spenders this offseason. All right, they have. I love the moves they've been making, Chicago Bulls. That's about for Bulls Spotlight this week. Do you think the Bulls are going to be a good team this year? Do you like the moves they're getting? Getting to Marty Rose and leave that answer in the comment section. I definitely do. Such a fun and exciting team to watch this year. Chicago Bulls. They got Alonzo Ball. They got the Marty Rose in. Still more to come and score. It's Brutal Lane Frick, episode number 42. <laughs> Now, at the buzzer, this week's at the buzzer is about my New York Knicks, my favorite NBA team. When is it time to stop waiting for a superstar to come around, all right? In 2017, it was Jimmy Butler, 28 in the next year. KD and Kyrie, Zion. Next year after that, Damian Lillard, Bradley Beal. Who's it going to be, all right? Who is the Knicks superstar? Who? It's time for the Knicks to stop waiting and do something, all right? The Knicks need to trade for a superstar. And it's got to be Damian Lillard. It's got to be Bradley Beal. It's time to stop waiting. Time to stop getting these discount stars like Evan Fournier. Evan Fournier, good player, but you're wasting $74 million on Evan Fournier when you can be trading or signing a superstar for that amount, okay? Next offseason, it's going to be a big offseason for superstars, okay? There's going to be a few superstars in that free agency. They got to go after one of them, or they got to get Damian Lillard right now, okay? Leon Rose, I'm talking to you. Get Bradley Beal or Damian Lillard. One of them is going to request a trade before the NBA season starts. I can guarantee you that. Might be Dame. Might be Bradley Beal. I've been talking about it for months. Damian Lillard or Bradley Beal. And, and you know, if they don't get either of those guys, Damian Lillard or Bradley Beal, next offseason, I want you to call up David Griffin. Because they're not going to do it right now. Not going to do it right now. But call up David Griffin if he's still the GM of the Pelicans. And say, hey, what about that Zion guy? And, Zion Williamson. I've been saying it for months, everybody. Zion Williamson will be a New York Knick in three years. Okay? Maybe even sooner than that. Zion Williamson will be in a New York Knicks uniform very soon, in my opinion. Okay? He will be. Just an interesting thing to think about. I really hope the Knicks get Zion Williamson. I would take Zion over Damon Lillard. I would take Zion over Bradley Beal. I would. Okay? Just an interesting thing to think about. New York Knicks need to make some action right now. Make a deal happen right now. That's what I think. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. That's about for out the buzzer this week. Now, the best for the last question today. This week's question today is, will Team USA prevail and win the Olympics for basketball this year? They got to go through a few teams. They got to beat Australia. They got to beat Slovenia. And they got to go through France. They got to go through all those teams. They're in the semifinals right now. They've already lost to Australia. They're in an exhibition game. They already lost to France. But that's the question today this week. Will Team USA prevail with KD, Jason Tam, Devin Booker, Chris Middleton, Zach Levine, so many more superstars? And win gold this year. Will they? Leave your answer in the comment section. That's about for question of the day this week. That's about for Squared Sports Land Frig, Eps number 42. Thank you for tuning in. Follow Squared Sports Instagram at Squared Sports. Follow Squared Sports on Twitter at Squared Sport. Follow Squared Sports on TikTok at Squared Sports. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review for the best sports content in the world. We'll be back here next week on Eps number 43.